Look at that! New intro! I finally got myself together to do one. I'm quite impressed with myself. But then again, I normally am quite impressed with myself. And let me add a, another new addition. We're going to have this on uh, pretty much indefinitely now. Uh, go check the, the, the link below. My Indiegogo sign-up is there. Go and sign up for it, and I'll stop bothering you to sign up for it. I'm not going to stop bothering you, okay? I'm not going to stop bothering you. It's just good. it's just going to happen. Listen, you've heard me talk about many, many times. You get uh, one of the, these art cards over here if you just sign up with any purchase. So go ahead. Sign up today. Fine. Uh, but today, today is the video vault. We are entering the video vault, and we're entering quite a, a fun little movie in the video vault. We, we, I don't have as many people here as, as normal. I got, I think, uh, two more that's going to be showing up at some point during the stream. I, uh, I, I wait with bated breath. Uh, but you know, let me introduce who, 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 uh, who we have with us first. Uh, uh, you know, this, this first guest, this first guest to analyze this movie, I am intrigued to know what he's going to say, because he is also a filmmaker. He's also a geek. Uh, he's a bit of a big geek, though. I would call him more a mega geek. Mega geek, how are you? And I was going to say, this this movie is <laughs> a million miles away from the sort of stuff I see you do. Not as many sexy women in it as your ones, though, of course. No, no, not at all. But I, I'll leave my criticism of Lockstock until uh, when we... Well, well we're right. going to get there in a minute. Yeah. I, uh, I, 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 I have bated breath. Uh, you know who else I think has bated breath? Who else probably has bated breath? Uh, I, have a, I have a friend here. He's uh, uh, he's a bit he's a bit of a problem. Bit of a problem. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, you know he, he has, he's found a, a, a true a true state of being to inhabit. Problem being, how are you? Hello, I am good. You're good. You sound, yeah. uh, or even though I've just gone through sitting through this bloody movie. You re okay? You really didn't like it. I thought. I, I honestly, I had a very pleasant time. <laughs> it, it, it was better than 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 I than I thought. You know, than I thought. But oftentimes, when you do when you you do the show, you sit down and you watch the movie, and you, it's a movie that you haven't seen for for quite some time, and you never know if you're going to like it or not. Right? You never know. I was like, hoping. I was hoping. I was hoping. Uh, no. I, firstly, I said I was. I was. Of, hey, listen, it's not Citizen Kane, but I was perfectly entertained. You know, you you know who who I, I wonder if they were amused or not. Uh, so we have uh, we 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 have ro uh, royalty with us. A uh, bit of a minor royalty. It's, it's Birmingham's king of the geeks. It's not really royalty. Royalty. It's only Birmingham. But never mind. Uh, but it was he amused? Was he not amused? Let us find out. Uh, Dan Hadley, Birmingham's king of the geeks. How are you, sir? Well, I've, I've been thinking. I don't know so much about a crown. Perhaps it's, as it's Birmingham's king uh, king of the geeks, I need a flat cap. But bejeweled. <laughs> there you go. You so like, yeah, I'm that, doing that, a finders for, uh, uh, fan that you could uh, probably get one of those. I can lend you mine. Was, <laughs> was, I, was I amused? I was amused. I was amused. It's been the first time I've seen this film in a long time, and I'm very eager yeah. to talk about it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about it. You know who I'm looking forward to hearing? Uh, uh, who they, you know, you know, what they thought about it. Uh, you know, I, I, I oftentimes, oftentimes, I, us clergy, us clergy are like, you know, uh, uh, American Indians. You never see two of us together, especially, <laughs> especially from them, uh, one, one from different tribes. So yeah, so uh, I'm uh, super, I'm super excited today to have with us, uh, uh, you know, another man of the cloth. I would say a slightly cleaner man of the cloth, a more, a more clothy man, <laughs> of the cloth, probably. And it's of course Father Christopher Miller. How are you, sir? Doing pretty good. Had to wear the hat. I'm about two months overdue for a haircut. I don't want to show my big Afro hair. Uh, well, okay. nothing wrong with that, right? Let me tell you. No, the fellow, the fellow. <laughs> <laughs> on a priest. <laughs> yes, nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> for a priest, Afro, yeah. Uh, cool. You know that I, I that that's the movie that that I want to see. Let me quickly say 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 hello to the uh, uh, the chat. Eastern, how are you? I saw you. What's that? You you messaged with me, but I haven't replied. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, uh, Roger Ebert and America Review have called this film fun. It was sometimes. Darren M, how are you doing? Oh my god, Darren just sent me the most awesome box ever. Firstly, I've been moaning because I can't get any bloody uh, shipping supplies in, in Israel right now. Because of the uh, they they were on lockdown, he sent me a bunch of freaking shipping supplies, and he sent me uh, 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 two very good Monty Python books. And they, uh, I, the third thing I've been over yet looked like like the the result. Darren, thank you so incredibly much. Let me pay you for the shipping supplies at the very least, because you know I wouldn't just go. Get what, what, what were the Monty Python books? Uh, but they're not in front. No, I, I listen. I'll I'll bring them out tomorrow on the street. One is really cool. You got all this stuff. You open up this stuff in it. You can open up and all. That. I like all that sort of stuff. Uh, oh, is so it the yeah. Monty Python Papa Bock? Could be. 
Yeah, like, oh, I, I've, I've got I loads of I was too excited when I got it. So I was like, oh, sorry, God, I really was. I was too excited to like uh, uh, look at it properly. So, um, uh, let me see. Make, uh, Ethan says hello to Megan. Problem being, uh, problem being, you're in the chat as well. It's very confusing. Um, we're, <laughs> we're up, we are up. We are caught up. Today. No we, we have uh, uh, Noel from the Tardis Zone and uh, Ninja Knight will probably be joining us at some point during this but uh i think i think we'll start talking about this movie they just put pull up a a few you know graphic aid memoirs so we know what we're talking about there we go doink there a lock top a stock and two smoking <laughs> barrels so uh, um this movie i think uh, uh there's a there's, I, I'm, there's a few general impressions i have of this movie firstly um is people in their late twenties really, really having a good time? They're like, like everybody is in their late twenties and having a really good. And yeah, I think that's why I relate to this movie. It was ninety eight. I was in my late twenties, also having a pretty darn good time. So I was very, very contemporary to 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 all of these people. Um, I just enjoyed it. it. It seemed to me to be a spiritual successor of all the other, uh, you know, Cockney, uh, chirpy, winky to camera, uh, you know, London crime thrillers that aren't too. Uh, uh, you know, too, incre uh, too incredibly violent. But it was, it was, was really violent. It feels like it, it, it updated nicely. The humour worked for me. I just found it an enjoyable experience. So I, I, I let's go over, go over like general overview for it. Uh, let's start start with you, Mega Geek. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I I first saw it in a cinema and I wasn't really impressed with it at all. I was bored halfway through. Really? Eight minutes. I Eight Honestly, minutes and they were still I, I, talking. I found the last act didn't really work. Um, well, the, the, thing... the, last, the last bit, the, it, it worked the first time I saw it. And this time I, I felt it was, it was not as technically proficient as I, as I remember it being. But generally speaking, I thought it rattled along. I liked the plot. And I, I was entertained the whole thing. It was like an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes. Well, well, for, for me, it, you know, the film's okay. It, it's... A, a, I've always found this film overrated, tell you the truth. And um, it's just, it just plods along, you know. I mean, if you're into Cockney rhyming slang, and, and quite frankly, I know a lot of Cockneys, right? Because I live in, yeah, you know, I live in like South London and nobody speaks like this. No, 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 no one. It's all, no, it's all, absolutely. I mean, it's all, it's all, it's all exaggerated. Yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, there's some nice moments uh, in, in it and uh, stuff, but I've never, really ever liked this film and seeing it the second time i thought i would like it more but i didn't you know it's okay it's not it's not brilliant it's all right it's all right it's film you can tell it's low budget and um yeah, thing is though yeah, that, 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 thing that, is that, though that, the, the one thing i do 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 not like is you've got all these middle class you know upper class people playing working class people um in fact i think um uh david uh, what's his name um statham is I think he's working class. I'm not really sure. There's a few working class people in there, but majority of them are all middle class, upper class people pretending to be. Well, and James you know, is, uh, not, what, yeah. what about Fletcher? Who? What? Dexter Fletcher? Fletcher from, no, from, from, that uh, guy's uh, middle class. He went to private school. Actually, didn't they? Yeah, right. he went to private school. And, and you know, when you've got people like Sting and stuff, like you can tell they pulled a lot of favors and and stuff like that. But that, that's 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 neither here or there. The movie to me was just okay. You know, it's not okay. great, it's not brilliant, it's okay. That's that's certainly fair enough. Proud of me, you are not a fan. Tell, tell me what uh, what your thoughts were. Uh it, it, it's a, a violent um comic cartoon. Uh it it, it seems You're saying to be all a those things, all those of... things like it's a bad thing. All those things are good things um, to me. Yeah, I mean I, I, I kind of agree with Ian. It's kind of like um it, for me, it just rolls along as a series of sketches. Uh, it's it seems to be written around a few snappy one-liners, which sort of raise the smile um, and a kafor or two. But <clears throat> really beyond that, it was just kind of so contrived and over the I mean, top. It, and... It, it was very contrived, but I thought the plot was was actually quite i i thought the plot had all had a pretty had a bunch of decent strands in it and they all tied together pretty neatly in the end so for me that was all fine that, that i like the plot i thought was good good standout moments in there um but really not enough to keep me sort of engaged until i kept looking at my phone <laughs> this, right. this kind of 
So if you yeah. think about it, I had the totally opposite experience. I like I was just like really into it. Uh Dan, you 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 had a better time with this though. So what, what do you think? I did, I did. I like you, Rabbi, I was exactly who this film was being aimed at, really. I think in the in the late nineties I was also having a pretty good time. At least I thought I was at the time. Didn't end too well in the in the end. <laughs> but I, I was having a good time and this film was incredibly culturally significant. It uh, came along at the tail end of the whole cool Britannia thing that began, I suppose, began with Oasis uh, versus Blur and kind of ended with Robbie Williams. Ironically, he's on the soundtrack. And the arrival. I I missed that that whole thing. I left England in uh, 96. (laughs) So I totally missed all that. You left, actually, probably left at its peak then, really. Mm. Yes, uh, because that was when when the whole thing was really kicking off. And FHM magazine, all that sort of thing. Oasis, Blur, Pulp and Suede, all that. But by 98, you see, although this film was probably conceived around 95, 96, and came out in 98, Mm. by the time it was released, that kind of, that music was falling away. You know, you've got Ocean Colour scene in this film, the great track that opens the movie. But sadly, the charts was being invaded by the likes of Steps by this point. So Yeah, and it, for the, me, it was a, the whistle. A, brick, a brick box movie. It was there to shift <laughs> soundtracks. You know, that's... Uh, the maybe, that. maybe. It was, um, I mean, uh, yes. So what was I saying? Yes, it was... Um, so it, it, it's, come, it's got all that, all those attachments. Uh, Ian's right, and... Uh, that the word, I think, in reality, the word is plodding. I think it, I think it does plod along, which is really strange for a film which is starts off so entertaining and so full of life, mm. and, uh, and and seems to have something and it's something that it really, really wants to wants to give. It seems to grab you by the scruff of the neck in that first. 10 minutes, say up until the halfway mark, it takes you a while to realise that it's all, of course, abject nonsense. And <laughs> and desperately, <laughs> and desperately... Well, again, I, I, I just found it very, very entertaining, abject nonsense. But yeah, it, it, it really, crazy. it really is. It, it's uh, it, it's um, not as clever as it, as it thinks it is. And it's un, it's underwritten. I think I think Tarantino, somebody like that, would write the balls off this. I think it's very well, this is very Russell obviously Russell. a reaction to Tarantino, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, it seems and, to me. So there's a lot, a lot going on in it, and it is, yes, and it was then, and probably still is now, probably overrated and over lamented. But I think there's a lot to talk about. It's a cocktail of things, none of them particularly original, but it just came along at the right time. And yes, yeah, I, honestly, but I, I, I think all the ingredients in that cocktail just kind of work together for, for what I wanted to do. You know, for yeah, I, 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 I feel that none of it was that original, but still, it, it for me, yeah, who it. Cares? Just, it it was like the it was like a new Rio regeneration of of an old favorite, and it it, it, it felt like it modernized. Well, yeah, I mean, for all of these are all these are mostly stage school kids. I mean, uh, what's his name? Jason Fleming certainly is. Dexter Fletcher, you know, he's he's about as, as posh as they come without speaking with the plum in his mouth. Uh, Jason Statham, I've never been too sure about. I, I've never. I think I find him quite watchable, but I think he's probably not who he appears to be. And so you've got that. That, that sort of um, that sense of it being all very implausible and a version of London. This is, I mean, it may have changed yeah, the yeah, perceptions it's, it's globally. A fantasy version of London, which I, yeah. well, although I like that fantasy, That's fine. So I, I'm yeah, okay it's with it. Absolutely fine. It reminds me a little bit of, and I know people are going to think this is sort of um, heresy, but I, th- I think what it was leaning into were the Ealing comedies, all that kind of thing. It's a broader yeah, it's comedy like, than, yeah, I, than I remembered. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, take it away. <laughs> and, and, and that um, pub, actually, that pub reminds me of a pub in East London called the Palm Tree. <laughs> it's oh, so right. similar. I remember. Yeah, I remember. We'll, we'll, we'll get the second. The, uh, get the second. But Father Miller, what's your? You, so you're the only uh, non-Brit on the panel tonight. What was your uh, yeah. uh, uh, impression of this very, very British, well, very, very London movie? I was going to say the only actor I recognized was Sting. Okay. He's um, not an actor. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, it took a while to get into it. Um, I think uh, it was the combination of a lot of different storylines, and when they started to merge at the end, it became more fun for me. Um, yeah. I was going to say, Dan, talking about Brit, or the Britannia, Oasis was one of the first CDs I ever bought. What's the story, right. Morning Glory? Yeah, I was right. a sophomore in college, I think, at that time. But it, like I said, I mean, I, the music drew me in. Um, 
again, there's so many characters, it was kind of hard to keep them straight or what their roles were, but... You know, I, uh, I, 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 just, I didn't really th think about that, because, again, from, for me, I'm English. They already seem very easily discernible, but I guess if you're not, mm -hmm. it's going to be a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. But it had a very Italian job ending. Yes. So, yeah, listen, it was absolutely leaning into that 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 heritage. That uh, rip off. Uh, yeah, rip off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, I could go, go either way on it. I still enjoyed it either way. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm oh, okay I did with too. it. I did too. I mean, it's one of those movies I've always heard about but never seen. So there you go. Are you interested to to watch uh, Snatch now? I'm curious. So did this pique your interest or I... did you? I don't know, but as I was telling you, uh, I think on Twitter, Layer Cake is streaming on Amazon. Love Ooh, that might be an, uh, so an I might. I think I'm going to watch that next. Okay, uh, that's a good, good, a good choice. Fine. So let, let let's start talking about the basic plot of this movie. So you got these four uh, London Barrow Boys. Why? Yeah, I think Barrow Boys is basically what what they go for. They made a TV yeah. show from this, which wasn't very good, as I recall. Uh, <laughs> terrible. Yeah, Brandon from East End, this is in it, isn't it? <laughs> terrible. It was in, it was in terrible. it. Barrow no, a guy called Jack Branning. He's been in EastEnders for about 13 years oh, now. So you may not have seen him. Uh, uh, Red Dwarf. He was in one season Red Dwarf. Uh, one of the Canaries. And that, that's oh, no, back when, 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 when he had hair. Right? So he, he's yeah. very different then. That's the other Branning brother, but yes, you're absolutely right. Yes, oh, you're, no, in the, you're in the general oh, I can see that, yeah. Is he yeah. still in EastEnders, that guy? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them are. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Well, I can understand, you know, you know, the the other brother, but the first one's pretty good looking. He shouldn't be out doing something else. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's, oh, it's, see, again, it seems, seems seems weird that he's slamming. So anyway, we, we we it starts off. We have um, what was it two uh, two uh, two of these four doing criminal stuff, being being criminal. They're selling. Oh, you get you get the uh, market pattern, which I quite liked. Uh, who, who was doing that? Was it Jason Stratham? Jason Statham. Yeah, Jason Statham. Statham. And yeah, that that again, I like that. All seemed. I heard that many, many times walking down. West was it Mark. just me? But the um, was was the um, uh, the 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 actual picture itself was it a bit weird? Because it looked like it was out of step with 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 the rest of the film. It looked like it was jittering slightly. Maybe the mm. uh, the speed of the film was wrong there. I, 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 the beginning bit was just weird to me. Well, I mean, they, they, they did do this very good shot as they're running away uh, away from the police, right? And they oh, drop so. all this stuff. And the case opens, and they just. They cut to slow mo at that point, which again I think is a very inexpensive way of doing something that that visually I thought was very grabbing. But do you know what the truth is behind this film? The truth is what? that the first cut was too long, and Guy Ritchie didn't know what he was doing, and so they wanted the the, the people at finance. They were really angry with with uh, with what they saw, the preview that they saw. So they got this editor in that literally created this film the way you see really? it now. That's yeah. wild because yeah. this film was made in the editing. Because uh, because if you because if you look at the shots carefully, they deliberately did a sepia tone um, grade on the film. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why they did that is because majority of the photography was really bad. So they, they, they wow, these, I like, that these was guys. Nice yeah. So if you I look at some shots, you can see some skin choice. tones. If you look at some shots, you can see some skin tones, and it looks really nice. But majority of the shots are terrible. So that's why they sepia tone most of the film. To try and disguise the fact that the photography wasn't well, I, very I, good. Honestly, I yeah, think that, that, that was a good choice because I, on it, I really thought that was a narrative choice, and I thought it was a narrative choice that really kind of worked with the movie. Uh, now, you know, lot, I know a lot like, about this film. That's the problem. I know a lot about it, and I know a lot of mistakes that happened. So, in, I know. I know. Guy Ritchie. Guy, well, Guy Ritchie fell asleep at one point in his director's chair, and he wasn't really directing the film, unfortunately, because he doesn't. He didn't know how to direct at that time. I think he knows now, but so, so, um, yeah, so it was a lot of trouble did, in this film. Mm, sorry. How, so, so how does this movie happen then? How did he get the job? Well, he's he really well people. connected. Um, um, what's his name? The producer. Um, uh, Trudy, his... Trudy Stylist, things no, 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 no. The other producer, the guy that directed Matthew the, Vaughan. the... Oh, yeah, Matthew Vaughan. Matthew Vaughan's first film was um, was a film that my DOP lit originally, and um, yeah. and so he had a lot of contacts. So basically, he pulled up every stop to make this film. 
lock stock so all the stars oh, that you yeah, see that, in it you know it was, it was down that, to matthew born you do to make a movie in it yeah yeah, well. yeah exactly yeah i mean you got to take your hat to hat off to these people they did make a really good film and it did capture the uh the public's imagination and yeah, also was, because they're the well way. connected yeah because they were well connected they could talk to the newspapers and newspapers pushed it really heavily at that time and contacts and and stuff like that so you know, they they did what they they set out to. You know, and it's not well, a cult, didn't it? I mean, yeah. it, it was on the zeitgeist, you know, of British it, it, cinema. You know, I think I I I'm not sure he, Father Miller might might, might know. Uh, I think that's how the uh, the current Pope became the Pope because uh, <laughs> you know, he was the previous Pope's like chief of staff or something. I can't remember. He was like the chief, of, and then no. because everybody knew him and he was just around. That's how he became the Pope. Are you talking and Francis or Benedict? The current one, I'm not sure. Who, who Benedict, the Benedict was more a uh, right-hand man to Pope, Pope John Paul II. Francis right. was from Argentina, and honestly, I'd never heard of him until he was elected. So is that the current one? Right. From the current one? Francis is the current one. Oh, okay, so I, maybe, maybe the story I heard was from the... Um, I think you're talking about Benedict. Must be. Must be. Okay, from what you say. Uh, we, 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 we have the rest of the panel with us. Uh, Noel from the Dodgers. Hey. Oh, how are hey. you, sir? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. How are you? Fabulous, fabulous. Uh, we, we, we've we only just started. We're only well, for about a little well, bit. Yeah, just dealing with a few idiots today. That's all. No. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> yeah, yeah, Twitter is a real, mate. Twitter is a yeah, real. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what is real? You know, I'm just going to uh, uh, um, uh, go over here for a second and just say uh, th this Indiegogo sign up is real. So go and click the link right down there in, the, in uh, right now and just join the main list. Join the main list and I will leave you alone. That's basically my pitch. Join the main list, I'll leave you alone. But now I've got my compliments coming over. Ninja Knight. Ninja Knight, how are you doing, sir? Evening, gentlemen. Evening. Good um, evening. Programming note. Programming note. Cool. Tomorrow Fine. night, we're, we're, if, if uh, no, no one's up for it, we are back for uh, uh, Geek Lord Overmind. Uh, I was going to ask Ninja Knight to go on my team, but then I thought maybe Noel's a bit proprietary about that. And so I'm just yeah. kicking you now, live on air. I'll go on any team. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Noel's not going to take that very well. <laughs> traitors on. <laughs> oh, one second. Speaking of traitors, after earlier, I started w watching The Crown and I had a major revelation on the first one episode in. I grew up in London, so yeah, you you what are you talking about? You were talking like how much you couldn't stand Margaret Thatcher when you saw her, and you had the talk about the IRA and the troubles. I yeah. was on the other side. I was on the other side in that war. So, <laughs> so like, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a completely the different perspective. I'm like, oh, I got remember. So there you go. We have to talk about it sometime. We have to stream about the crown because we are really going to disagree. Uh, well, I think I think it's it's about the crown without going off too much topic was rubbish. No, don't tell me. I'm only one episode in. I'm enjoying it so far. All right. Well, you won't enjoy it. Rubbish. Okay. <laughs> who was the written boy? Well, Perry, I said from fingers down the throat and, you know, the usual crap from Charles and Diana. That's all you're getting. Okay. Right. Yeah, trigger warning, because you need a trigger warning. People, okay. get, people getting blown up and people getting killed, but, hey, you need a trigger warning for vomiting because you yeah. might have feelings. Uh, okay, and again, I haven't got there yet, so uh, I guess... We're oh, no, you're grand. There's no big explosions. You're grand. It's all Barb and Diana sticking her fingers down her throat. <laughs> Charles pointing over far, horse face Camilla. You're not missing much. They wasted Julian <laughs> Anderson, to be quite honest with you. Julian Anderson's... Julian Anderson is the source of the most confusing erections. Uh, <laughs> oh, which you see as Margaret Thatcher, yeah. Thatcher, so I don't understand. Uh, but anyway, back, back to Lost Dockers from Two Smoking Barrels. So yeah. we have brought these four London Barrow Boys, and uh, they're all like a little bit criminal, a bit oh. dirty, they're all like little mini Arthur Davis, basically, uh, with, with, with more violence. Uh, and they, they all managed, but they all got hearts of gold, they managed to pull together 25 grand each. Uh, so they can stake uh, uh, one of them to go, and uh, who's an incredibly good gambler, to go and uh, take part in a in, in a high stakes uh, uh, poker game. Uh, which oh, they, can uh, I just say something actually? Yeah. So Diva Magazine, as you know, all covered me uh, information. Well, thanks to Mister Carter's reviews and a couple of other jealous little swines, uh, 
Diva magazine has deleted the original tweet, and while the article text remains unchanged, they removed the links and any hyperlinks to Noel's video. Wow, come back. Of little I did a video about that today. Mr. Tardis reviews actually slandered me on Twitter this morning, and a pure what? slander. This cunt is getting away with it uh, time and time again. Uh, again, the interesting update. So he's he's basically bragging because you know they have this little bit of power and they're able to get Diva Magazine to change the article. Well, I'm going to actually go now and have a word with Diva Magazine to say that I'm going to sue them for slander for the simple fact of the matter is they believe what Tardis uh, reviews has said to them. So I will be going uh, to Diva Magazine right now to let them know that if they don't reinstate the article... So, no, uh, can, I, can I just ask, have they used you as a source? They've quoted you, your information and they've, they've taken that to their platform and then another content maker... One of one of our peers has gone to them and, sm yeah. and smeared your character, yeah. and, so, and so they've kept your they've kept your story, but but uh, removed all mention of yeah. you personally. Yeah, that's yeah. That's outrageous. That is so outrageous. That's that's really, that's really bad. That's really actionable. That is completely I'm going to be it, it, now. They don't realize how much trouble they're in because this guy has been slandering me all morning. You should see the tweets that he's being putting out. That's, it's really shocking. That is for somebody who is li who is one of us. Whether he agrees with us or not, whether I mean I never have anything to do with the guy, but th this is th that's seriously out of order. It really is that awful. Is out of order. And shame on uh, Diva listen, as listen, well. Okay, I, I, I put in a tweet to them and said that he's none of these. That Noel is none of these things. That I'm proud to call him my friend. That I am a gay man. And all these things are untrue. And for them to just take on board this kind of sycophantic, uh, narcissistic <laughs> projection. I need just to anybody that's on Twitter. I need just to go on to Mr. Tardis Reviews page. I need just to look at the slanderous tweets that he's put out about me. And I need you to report them. I'm not playing anymore with this fucker, right? So Sorry, please man. report them. Report the slanderous tweets. There's about four or five of them. You will I see them. You'll know exactly what I'm And complain to Dean from magazines. Well. I think we should report them and Rabbi send round Barry the Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, listen, I, I, I would do, I, to, to uh, as you brought, brought it up, I, uh, this was the, uh, uh, I, I did put a video about, uh, about that today. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with the thumbnail. <laughs> I, I was going to put a Mr. Tardis Reviews uh, 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 head exploding in next to it, but it's been deep. <laughs> do you think Barrowman is going to help the ratings, do they? <laughs> yeah, they will get it. will get a little bump. Uh, bump oh, little I mean, it's shit desperation. It's so. Obvious. Well, he he's been at the same stuff as well too as the Pascal fella making stupid statements on his social media recently. I'd be surprised if they think he's going to be the draw for people to come in and back and no back and watch. No one going to be watching this. Five years. No one going to be watching. What, what a bunch of morons! What a, what a jealous little swine! That's uh, all yeah, 100%. That's what he is. This is just jealousy, by the way. This is just jealousy. This is nothing else. He's just jealous because I've made more of an impact in this fandom than he has in whatever how many years he's on. You're a jealous piece of shit, and I'm coming for you. Simply punching like down, it. punching down is, is lousy, quite in frankly. The, is, it, isn't it? It really is. Well, punching across is a peer of yours. I mean, go, looking at Doctor Who, actually, who would have made the best Doctor, Jason Fleming or Dexter Fletcher, do we think? It's a good question. Let's go. Uh, Is that picture, that I picture you people. just had up, he looked doctorish there to me. This one or the other one? No, no, the one where he was on his own, Jason Fleming. I've always liked him. He was great in Quatermass, wasn't he? He was, he was really good in that. And Primeval. He He's also uh, in Snatch as yeah, well, too. He plays one of the Brad Pitt's uh, friends as well, too, on that one. He's also a Zazel in uh, the X-Men yeah, yeah. Force class. And to note as well, too, this has been done by Matthew Vaughn, who also did X-Men Force class. So he gets around Jason Fleming. He was also in Clash of the Titans as well, too. So fairly prolific years for a guy that kind of, you know, an awful lot of people probably wouldn't remember. You know, yeah, yeah, Matthew, yeah, they, they, Matthew, I, I, Vaughn put, Matthew Vaughn puts him in everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, when 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 Matthew <laughs> was tipped to to head the Star Wars tr trilogy, uh, the sequel the, the the sequel trilogy, he he, he was down for a, for a role in it. Apparently, wow. Was Wait, he imagine a Matthew Vaughn. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Rabbi. I, I was going to say, imagine a, a sequel trilogy by Matthew Vaughn. That would have been pretty good stuff, you know, given the fact yeah, he's done Kingsman, yeah, you know. Uh, the, 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 I, was, I was quite excited at the time. Listen, I was excited up until the last Jedi. Be honest with you, I was excited up until the last Jedi. 
I had to be honest, once I seen The Force Awakens, I was like, "Mm, I can see it. (laughs) Uh, Force Awakens, I was like elated at the end of it. I was like, oh, let's go more. And then it went down. Um, (laughs) Anyway, let's get back to Lots Talking to Smoking Barrows. The basic plot, the basic plot. We have these four London Barrow boys. They pull together uh, 100,000 so they can get into a high stakes game. Uh, where they are cheated, they're cheated. They are they are trumped, uh, let, let us say. Uh, and uh, and they uh, they go from being like what twenty uh, two hundred thousand up to being five hundred thousand down in like the space of one card, uh, <laughs> and then they're in trouble. Right? <laughs> That's really the, the plot. Of the movie, but mo- most of it is about is about them just uh, sparkling their personality against each other. All these like mm. London stereotypical gangster personalities. Well, it's kind of like you know the uh, what's it the uh, the healing cult comedy, uh, the Lady Killers. You know, it, it's it seems yeah. to be the Lady Killers 2.0. By the sequel, the, the remake they did that was horrible. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, Tom Hanks wasn't it in that one? Yeah, it was yep. not good at all. Not good. So, does anybody have anything they want to say about the opening on the first like I know uh, half an hour? Uh, let's start with you, Ninja Knight, as your your newish here. Yeah, um, I really like it. I have to say, like I've said it before, I'm a huge Guy Ritchie fan. Like I don't think anyone could really understand how much I really like him. Um, I love how macho his stuff is, and I love basically like the openings for his movies. I think really set the precedent for what's going to happen. I'm gonna go. I'll see you later, Harry. Hi. Have a good evening. Hi, Keno. Ooh, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, I think, you know, when it starts off about, like, the friends and their small-time criminals with Eddie, Tom, Soap, and Bacon, and they put the money together then to go in for the card shark, uh, or card shark thing, it's really interesting stuff to, to start off the movie with such a high-stakes game that actually sets the, the tone for the rest of the movie. So I quite like the start of it, and um, I think it's acted very, very well. Uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I yeah, I, got, I, honestly, for me, I, you missed my beginning. I, I really just enjoyed it. I found this a very enjoyable movie experience. I generally speaking, like, like Guy Ritchie movies, I, I, I'm still trying to get my head around, around the gentleman about, I can't work out why I don't think that worked. Oh, uh, I'm really excited for that. Last year? I'm sorry. Is that the one that just came out last year? Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cause I just ordered that last night. Oh, oh, Father is unbelievable. Quite. It's so good. It's to me, it's you probably like, the best. You movie. To it. I, d- I absolutely loved it. But there was many things that happened in that movie that I love, and I have to say, it was a real return to form for Guy Ritchie after Aladdin. So, yeah, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, oh, for, it. Now, for me, yeah. yes, for me, all the ingredients were great. I love every ingredient, but you put it together, and I wasn't entertained. This movie just thoroughly entertained me. So I don't. I really don't. I can't work out what it is. But again, like the performances, like the plot, like the uh, like the dialogue, like the. I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's great cast. Just put it all together. I, I don't think it really. And um, for me, it didn't work. It's really. Whereas this and Snatch totally worked. Uh, what, what else has Guy Ritchie done? He's um, doing a rock and roller. Rock and roller, excellent. I like that too. And uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Sherlock, Holmes. Back, Sherlock Holmes. He's also done Aladdin, so that's what I was saying. Coming off the back of Aladdin for the gentleman, to me, was a really good, strong return to form. I do think, though, when you do look at these movies like Lock, Stock and Snatch and um, Rock and Roll, there is a very big similarity amongst them. But I think with Gentleman, I think the Gentleman works for me in a lot of different ways. Now, I know today we're talking about Lock, Stock. I think we'll talk about the Gentleman another day. But I think that there is a certain kind of air of feeling as well, too, to these movies that they were made in, in and around the 90s, you know. They, they do feel a little bit dated in a way, you know what I mean? So maybe that's why you quite like it, Rabbi, is because <laughs> it reminds you of better times. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, again, the, the, the one of the reasons I, 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 I really enjoyed this because I was exactly the age that, you know, the, everybody was making yeah. this movie when it came out. I was like, yeah, late 20s, that was me. That was the, you know... Li- Late nineties, I was in my my late twenties. I was I was actually for me, I was having my my, my first kids then. But uh, but yeah, no, I kind of got the whole everything about it. Yeah. Um. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. But so again, opening. I think I, the, the characters are well drawn and set up. Uh, Father Miller said he had trouble uh, differentiating them, and I can I can kind of see that if you're not not English. Um. But yeah. Um. Uh. Well, who who's next to be asked? Uh, Father Miller. Do you have any thoughts on the beginning of it, the first half hour? 
uh, well, one of the things that really drew me was the music, and the music I can't. Great. I, I yeah, and I like to get the soundtrack eventually, or at least some of it. But I would say one of the characters I really enjoyed, I think he was in the beginning, was the enforcer with the little son. Oh, he was great. Vinnie Jones. <laughs> that was Vinnie Jones when everybody was surprised that he 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 was okay acting, right? And, uh, like he he this was his first movie, wasn't it? First And I just Lionel like him Girl. chastising his son for using profanity and then the other guy yeah, for blasphemy. Like, yeah. Went on to murder people. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, although I did have a hard time distinguishing people, I did enjoy some of the characters, even though I didn't understand it. As a, yeah, but that, yeah, that's where I am as well. I really enjoyed the, the, the characters in this movie. That, they're 100% where I am with this. Um, so, fine. So, then we, we, we have some, some other plot threads we need to talk about as well. It was the, we got these uh, uh, upper class boys who are growing. Insane amounts of weed, just insane amounts of weed, uh, in uh, uh, in this house they've got in the middle of London. Uh, mm -hmm. You have these dodgy, uh, much more criminal, violent gangsters um, who are. I can't remember why why they want to rip them off, but I think they just wanted the money uh, and the weed. And who? What, what other groups do we have? Uh, oh, and then we got got the uh, we got uh, one of the boys' father. Who uh, who is Sting? Who owns a pub? Uh, and uh, Vinnie Jones, as we said, as the 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 enforcer. Yeah, let me find find a picture of Vinnie, Vinnie Jones. I've been waiting to bring him up, bring, bring his picture up. Whoever uh, would have thought he would have made a decent actor. Sorry, <laughs> whoever would have thought he would have made a decent actor when he you was know playing what? from Millwall. I was surprised. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was. I was, re was rereading an interview with him recently. I said he was absolutely gutted that when when he didn't get uh, Gladiator. Yeah, you know, well, he was like, really, really upset about it. Well, what I mean, when he, you're up against Russell Crowe, I mean, you know, it's no, chalk no, and cheese. It, it, was, it was a small. It was, I think it was that German guy, Wolf uh, Roll. Uh, what's he called? I can't remember. Wolf, whatever his name is. Oh, Gladiator! I thought you meant Gladiator, as in like the the one with Russell Crowe. The there movie. for a yeah. no, It is Russell Crowe, but I'm talking like he was. He was one of the minor gladiators. He wasn't the main gladiator. It was like he was one of the guys that he met. You know, with uh, when he was, you know, in the provinces or wherever. Oh, he's right. been in a lot of stuff. Benny Jones. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's very good. I thought he did an okay job. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, again, I, and I thought I think his character was interesting. His character was really written for somebody who isn't isn't used to acting, right? So, and I really do think it worked. But I, th I, yeah, I do think 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 it think it, mm. uh, it came, came, came together. Uh, are there any other plot threads that are starting up? I'm trying to. You're right. There are a lot of plot threads. Anything I'm missing? I think there's everything, right? Mm. Oh wait, no, no. You ha also have the two. Uh, Two, two guys were northerners. Oh, yeah. Dan, the the, yes. the two guys who have to steal the guns, are they from Birmingham? They're from Liverpool. Well, Liverpool, yeah, okay. I think I the one guy, Jake, uh, yeah, because you've got a vi um, Victor Maguire from Bread. He's obviously yeah. from Liverpool, and he plays the larger of the two. The guy who's just had his hair done and then get it, gets it parted. Um, the smaller yeah, yeah. one. The smaller one, he's no, he no, he's from Liverpool too. Come to think of it, Jake, I can't remember the actor's name, but he in the late eighties, he was the sort of, he was a sitcom actor. He did a lot of sitcoms. He eventually turned up in Red Dwarf as a clone of Rimmer, but he's one of those actors who used to turn up all over the place. And Vass Blackwood's in this as well. The the actor from uh, In Sickness and in Health, the Alf Garnet show. Played played his lodger, one of the lodgers they had in, on that show, Alf Garnet show. He's always good. Often uh, with Lenny Henry, he usually plays Lenny Henry sort of right hand man in the Delbert Wilkins stuff. In terms of he's terrific, things. wonderful actor, great comic yeah. timing, and he delivers. Well, he delivers what, in this. Really what, was that the gangster guy? The uh, he's the gangster. The the black Mr. guy, the, the Afro, yeah, him. That's him. Yeah, he was in, he was in a famous episode of um, Only Fools and Horses. Yeah. There's a very famous episode yeah. where he held them hostage in a in a supermarket. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was him. a really funny episode. Yeah, that was yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, was that's him. him. That's, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. I would never recognise him. Yeah, the yeah. elusive yeah. shadow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, 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 he's a yeah, highlight. Yeah, it's, it's him. It's him. It's him and Vinnie Jones that that for me are the most entertaining aspects of this film. Also, the cats in this as well from Red Dwarf. Yeah, yeah, that's I true. Say, yeah. Briefly, it's about, 
He reminds me of the British Sam Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> well, no, that, that's, pretty <laughs> that's exactly what they're going for. A hundred percent. He's like, I want a Samuel L. Jackson. This guy, again, Guy Ritchie essentially watched um, Reservoir Dogs, I think, and then said... And it's stuck in his Oh, yeah. definitely. <laughs> like, we, we have to make something like this because we totally can, right? That's it. I think that's entirely what went down, right? Well, but, yeah, I mean, that's his entire raison d'etre, isn't it? Is, is to become... Like the 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 UK Tarantino, you know, I think that, and he that did that's it. Look, undeniable. He, 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 I think he did it until he met met Madonna, right? And that's <laughs> you know, <laughs> with Madonna. Um, and uh, yeah, I tell you, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I yeah, I, I can say I, all I can imagine is that Madonna is is the is one of the most incredible lovers in the world because she has the ability uh, to suck the talent out of anyone somehow <laughs> and wife <laughs> including herself yeah in more uh, ways than one so yeah I, it really is like well, everybody who's everyone is really talented gets together well, with, I mean, with look at most musicians most musicians away. most most musicians as they get older get better she does, yeah. she's the opposite. No, 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 she's no, worse no. and worse. Well, she, she was not. I'll really. give you a quick aside. A quick aside to that one. I seen Madonna warm up one time at a show, and she berated a dancer that was behind her. She couldn't even see the guy, and she knew he was out of line, out of, like out of time or something like that. And she turned and on the microphone, there was absolutely no need for it. Berated this guy in, into an empty stadium. More or less, it was. Oh, actually, I, I, I think I have a very, a, a very similar story. My parents used to own concession stands at Wembley State, Wembley Arena, and right. they. I think it was Madonna. They said it was the worst person they ever, ever had there. They wanted really? to clean out the stadium so they could rehearse uh, wow. without anybody getting a free show. And basically, and they said, "Look, we can't do it. We have workers here. We have cleaners. It's not possible." Yeah. And at the end of it, so at the end of the rehearsal, she's like, yeah, "Have you enjoyed your effing frame, Ben Slow? Oh, 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 wow. What an like, ego. Please, like, just be nice. You know, like, you're very successful. You're very successful. You're very wealthy. Be nice to people. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, You could do that when you're not successful and wealthy. But if you're successful and wealthy, there's less excuse not to. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I totally agree. So the, uh, they, they, they have to come up with 500 grand. Otherwise... Sting has to give up his pub to Vinnie Jones, uh, which Sting, <laughs> Sting is, Sting is, 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 is not, is not for, uh, very elate about this bit. Sting action for you. Um, and uh, and so they're trying to come up with plans to come, come up with the money. And uh, uh, and so they, they buy – this is, yeah, this is one of the wonky bits of writing. By happenstance, the other criminals that live next door to them, much more violent criminals, are planning on robbing the – uh, the upper class weed growers, uh, uh, who are apparently also being financed by another set set, set of criminals, uh, and so they and so they, their plan is to rob the robbers. Uh, Did you notice know the, the actor, by the way, in that in that in that group, the the guy who played Sherlock Holmes in the Spielberg film? Well, well, who One was? Of the yes, yes, it was Nickel. Uh, yes, I noticed him. Uh, can't remember. Who said. Bloody, I made a note. I thought I must mention mentioned young Sherlock. Yes, Nicholas young Rowe. Sherlock. Nicholas yeah. Rowe. That's the actor's yeah. name. Oh, he, you're right. That he does right. big finish. He does big finish there, Rabbi. Oh, what, 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 how the uh, mighty has fallen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, be happy. Big finish is one of the only people employing people right now. Yeah, that's <laughs> so he went from. <laughs> Yes, just tell Eric Roberts. He went from the uh, the pipe of Sherlock Holmes to the switch yes. of the character. He in did, this yeah. Yes. He did. Oh, yes. uh, uh, and you know, if if only, if only that weed was in good, uh, as good in real life as it clearly was. In the, in the <laughs> so yeah, so they're 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 very lax about their security. These uh, these stoner rich boys, uh, and so they 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 have their a cage a cage where they. Suppose it kept keep keep locked for very, just this situation where people turn up uh, to rob them and then they can't get in because there's a cage there. Now normally they keep the cage unlocked. The first time they ever lock it is when they get robbed, right? When they get robbed by <laughs> one of their uh, uh, one of their clients, um, and the robbery goes reasonably well for them. Goes badly for the rich kids because uh, they just like so incredibly outclassed in criminality right yeah they got a, a an air gun instead of like a, a real gun because he's like you know get 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 the rifle away <laughs> it's, it's oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it keeps popping them in the neck and and it's like <laughs> annoyance you know but they that arm to the bloody teeth and then they right, right, right. <laughs> it's, it's just like oh. again, again you know i just think the sense of humor of this movie 
<laughs> makes me laugh. It works. I just think it's, it's like a fun little joke. It makes me oh, uh, Chris Burgess, how are you doing? Uh, and uh, Tracy Thomas, how are you? Uh, yeah, it just there's a fun little, little fun little movie, and just make it just makes me laugh. Um, so the uh, so then during the robbery, it, it gets violent. There's so they're shooting people's feet off, and they they get it to get you know, get the money, get the money, and again gets violent. Uh, and, and the weed, and the weed, and the weed, and the weed. Now their plan ne ne nearly get, get gets derailed because they have one of them has a very very stoned girlfriend. I assume it's a girlfriend. Yeah, uh, I love that scene. That's, a, that's one of the best. Yeah, so they don't they 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 don't know so because she's too stoned. And then one point she gets up and gets a gun and just mows as many people down as she can. I think it was really clever the way she merged out from because she's covered in all these throw pillows and it happens to be matching what she's wearing. So she just sort of. She's camouflaged. Like, right, 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 right. Uh, I, I think it's fun. Yeah, that was uh, fun. That was good. Fine, fine. Does anybody have anything they would like to say about the robbery? Dan, Dan, we haven't heard from you for a while. What, what's your thoughts mm -hmm. thus far? I well, yeah. I mean, th things happen like this. This is kind of as the film carries on, as it gains, as it gains momentum. You know, Ian described it as plodding. This it starts to get into it starts to get into trouble. It knows where it wants to go, but it's not sure how to get there. And it's not because there's no real panache at play. I mean, I'm still sort of reeling from Ian's story about about Guy Ritchie because I've never looked into this film, and so I just assumed that it was a, a the first steps of a filmmaker finding his style. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. That's just my assumption. But it's just a chancer, really, sort of blagging his way to 100 minutes of half decent runtime and throwing the bulk of the work under somebody else. It strikes me. But moments like this are a prime example. You know that. You see, this was a cool. This was a cool moment. But that's really all it is. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, it's it's. Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be cool if? And and that was as far as the conception of it went. So whilst I don't think this is, a, I don't think this is a superficial movie. I think you have to sort of take it for what it is as well. I don't know. I think, it, I, I think I think it's a I think it's a movie. I think it's a movie made for trailers. I I, I really do. I think it was a movie that they made in a trailer that they could sell the movie. <laughs> do you know what I find? Um, sorry. Do you know what I find really interesting about this film? If you look at the history of the film, when the film starts, it seems like Nick Moran was the lead he was the, he was the good looking fella and then you got yeah. jason fleming and then you got dexter fletch and then you got jason statham and if you look at the history after that film jason statham was the is the biggest star that came out of that movie that's Nick a really Ryan good that's a really good point yeah jason fleming where well, he's still going but he's like one of those faces that you recognize in films but you don't know his name and dexter fletcher became the director and you know Amazing. what, Ian? You know what? I think that harms this film, not having an, a, a clear identifiable lead because yeah. you latch on and because that's why you latch on so hard to Chris, played by Vinnie Jones, because yeah. he's the, he becomes the, the strongest, defined character. We know what makes him tick. We know what he wants in the, mm. in the short term Jones, and the long Vinnie, term. Vinnie Jones was the, the, the most sympathetic character because... Even though he was a badass and you know a dangerous guy, he was honest in a, in a way. You know, like he was, he, he had yeah, yeah. sort of ounce of integrity, and he was caring for his son. Uh, and there, he, he was the only sort of character I really sort of felt any sort of affinity with or, or, or care about. I didn't care about any of the other characters. I didn't the, care they the died. Villains, the villains, the villains are all really hyper exaggerated. So when they get <laughs> and and they, it's very funny to watch them with you know with their hatchet faces and their catchphrases and their leery offices and, and their you know the gimmicks like whacking somebody. It looked like a British Dick Tracy cartoon. Yeah, well, mm. he, for all intents, it is a beating somebody to death with a big dildo. I mean, all that sort of thing. What it's wonderful <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but they, they it ultimately uh, Barry the Baptist. What a wonderful character, you know. In fact, in fact, if there was a gangster sort of uh, henchman or enforcer in this called the Rabbi, that wouldn't surprise me at all, Rabbi. <laughs> but all of this, all, all of that color, I think, yeah, it does it does uh, kind of fall away, and they only wrestle the film back because it hasn't. Somebody mentioned earlier on. I, I do apologize. I can't remember who it was, but the even in the last act. It never quite comes together for that payoff, for that you know that really sort of hyper energized shootout scene 
where the stakes are, are so high and you're willing everybody or anybody to, to survive, even that's quite clunky and clumsy. But they do manage to pull the film back. They do manage to, to uh, get you to reinvest again. Uh, but yeah, by the end of it, fun of wit, by the time uh, uh, Nick Moran gets in the car with his dad, yeah, you think, oh, this is the guy I was supposed to follow. This is this was the the final gambit. This was this was supposed to be an arc of some sort, and it it must have got lost in the in the edit. You know, I think Sting Sting is Sting. He's he's always okay. He's he's been great in some things. And uh, like he doesn't want to be there in others, I think he's fine in this. But it, that moment loses its power because we've seen so little of their relationship; it's got no got no weight to it. But yeah, the fact that this film does come together, and the fact that I did fall for that ending again just two months after watching the Italian Job, that says there what <laughs> there is some magic in this movie. There is something at work. Yeah, it's not a bad I, movie. I, I, I hear. You know, I want to go back to something that you said. You oh, can I just say that the go on? Sorry, go on. Sorry, Rabbi. I was like, I, you you described it as you said not not a superficial movie, but I think I really think it is a very superficial movie. But mm. I think it's good for that. I think it leads it leads into. I mean, I'm look looking at this picture here, and this was clearly like yeah. You know, they said we got to have some more pushback against these these these, these guys uh, robbing, and then and they I can see them having this idea, and then they threaded her back through the plot. She wasn't really. She's here. <laughs> you know when they, yeah, you know the yeah. thing where you, get there, you got if you have a gun on the wall in the first scene, you got to use it by the last scene. That's basically what she is right there. She's the gun on the wall, yeah, and then when they yeah. introduced her at the beginning, it, she didn't say anything. She didn't do much at all. Uh, but yeah, that's what. I, yeah, but I think I think it's actually kind of delightfully superficial, which I think is kind of like the vibe they were going for. I think there was supposed to be something underneath there somewhere, some sort of proverb, even if it was just that that thieves never prosper. And, and you know, I think that they they did they were trying to lean into that at, at some point. But it, again, even that sort of got lost because everything else was so was so cool. And of course, uh, another film that, uh, that Father Christopher was talking about the soundtrack, and they pushed. You know, the soundtrack album did really really well, not as well as the Train Spotting album, but I think they were definitely looking to strike. That kind of gold. Uh, absolutely, for me, it was one big advertisement for you know it's getting as much style as possible. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It, you know, they were trying to ride on a on a on a, on a zeitgeist, and yeah. the soundtrack for me seemed to be more. It seemed to be more of an advert for the soundtrack than it was for the movie. Right. You know, I think um, that's you see with yeah, the yeah, yeah, is. Do you know uh, my my producer? We 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 made Killing Zone almost almost the same time as Lock Stock, and my producer was very angry because he used to read in uh, I think it was the Guardian at the time they were going on about how these people had no money to make this film and they achieved this whatever. But the truth is that they had money and they had really really you know really good contacts and you know they had people with money that would help them along. So just a they, they, that yeah, they claimed that these people were you know they had nothing and this is what they made but yeah, it's not true well, you know you so think, you would think to be able to use the music that they did to pay exactly. whatever the yeah. licensing yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, they made a really good deal because i know i know nicola fletcher who did the deal for the music for this film and she did a really good deal she, she actually created a miracle for them and got that music for a very low price so you know there are deals to be done but the fact is that um what they claimed they'd achieved was a huge lie but it was a lie that was exaggerated so that they can bring publicity to the film. Yeah, but that's, that's fair okay. enough. You know, that's fair enough. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, think so with, I think with Matthew Vaughn and Guy Ritchie films, though, they are very heavy on the soundtracks. Like, I mean, something that is very memorable in both of their work is the soundtracks. You know what I mean? And a lot of the music that they do use is a little bit more obscure. And I think even with that little bit of obscureness, it, it does bring a different flavor to it. But I do agree with what you're saying. You know, they obviously had a good bit of help. And, you know, I think that's something that you see in a lot of Guy Ritchie's movies where he goes and talks about these kind of, you know, average guys that work their way up and they do become this successful kind of giant in, in their industry. But, you know, it, it is a, a thread that he does in most of his, his movies. Look, he did the same with Aladdin. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> well, he did well. Let, look, look, if you if you know filmmaking, you know he never really directed Aladdin. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that film was so complex with green, blue screen, yeah. and green screen, and everything that literally he probably just sat there and and and, and yeah. be advised yeah, yeah. from the special effects guys saying you have to have this shot, um, guy, yeah. you have to have that shot. Do you know what I mean? You, for a film like that, you don't really direct. Um, Lock yeah. stock, you can you know you can see some of his his direction in there, but not a lot because as I said, the story goes that. 
when they finished the, the cut, nobody could understand what was going on. So they brought in this really good editor to actually chop things and move things right. and do the, do, you know, do the slow motion and stuff like that and put the, mm -hmm. and then he suggested the, um, the color of the film because some of the photography wasn't very good and stuff like that. So it was a film that was hyped on, yes, it was Guy Ritchie. He's mm -hmm. a genius. He made all this film. He made all of this happen. Okay, but yes, the, the truth is, yeah, yeah the he's truth more, is, he's more a producer. Yeah. In that well, 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 no, he, he, no, now he can direct because I think he learned by doing, but, but, no, but as I said, the fact is that when he did this film, he wasn't as knowledgeable as he is now, yeah. put it that way, yeah. So, but That's he's a good enough. job all round, though. Let's face it, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, listen, I, I, how how it comes together, I that doesn't really bother me. Quite frankly, yeah. let that it get together. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, 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 essentially, all the uh, uh, plot threads uh, link up nicely at the end. We have the uh, let me see. Now it's complicated. We have the guns that were stolen uh, from the rich people <laughs> by the guys from Liverpool. <laughs> they ended up with boys the for some reason. Bread. I can't remember why. But he has to get them back for the big villain who they got to get the money for. Uh, you have the people who did the robbery. They get robbed by uh, the boys, and the and, the, and, and it goes well. They have a nice they, they have a nice night drinking. Uh, ooh, no, they got like you know tons of weed. I, I'm surprised they went drinking. But anyway, <laughs> whatever. Uh, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, um, uh, basically, everybody, everybody, everybody collides at the end, um, and it's interesting when 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 I watched the ending this time around. I, I yeah, but the first time I watched it, my, my my impression of it was it was all kind of just like everything fit and together seamlessly. It just all came together in perfect puzzle. This time I'm watching it, I found it a little bit clunky, like the direction a little bit clunky. I think it must have been that I was carried away with the style of the substance, and this time I was looking for the substance. And yeah, it just struck, struck me as being a little bit clunky, but still thoroughly enjoyable. And then we end up with the Italian job gag where they find out that they, they lose the money and they find out the guns are worth like $300,000 or pounds, uh, just as Jason Strait is about to throw him into a river somewhere. It looks like he's on London Bridge. I'm not sure where yeah, he is. The terms, yeah. Yeah. So, so what's uh, uh, okay? Let's start with you, Ninja Nine. What, 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 what's your thoughts on the end of this movie? Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's something that Guy Ritchie does well. Look, look, I, I'm a self-confessed Guy Ritchie fan. So I think when things are wrapping up in his movies, I find that he does end movies quite well with, you know, all of the threads neatly tied up. I do get the understanding that this is kind of some of his earlier work and some of the stuff you could say looks a little bit messy. But overall, I think it's, it's really solid stuff, you know, and I think... You do have a bigger appreciation for all of the characters as well too that have been in this film and have gone through the struggles of what they've done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so um, I yeah. think that, you know with Tom. I think with Tom, you know, at the at the bridge is very symbolic as well too. You know, is is, is pretty. <laughs> it's pretty funny stuff as well too in a way, and it does kind of give you a bit of a, a look at, as to say, look, this this stuff is fairly real for these guys. You know. I, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. Look, look for me again. Looking at it, you can tell it's all. Yeah, I think superficial is is a super is, is a very good word. But it's so enjoyably. It's like somebody telling a joke. You know, when they tell a joke, yeah. you know, it's not really unless when I tell a joke. You know, I always pretend it's real. <laughs> 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 yeah, I lie a lot. They say, yeah, everybody should know. I do lie a lot. If I say true story, you know it's not a true story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gathered that. <laughs> yeah, that's a that, that's hundred percent. True, but a true story. You can go and sign up for this Indiegogo right now. I'd very much appreciate it if you did. There you go, true story. Um, um, I forgot. I forgot the saying, but uh, but even the, even though it's stylized and very contrived, I just I enjoyed it. I I, I enjoyed the everything about it. Um, uh, Father Miller, what, what 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 what's your thoughts on the end? Of the well, movie? like I said, once I once the stories started to intertwine and come together, I really enjoyed it, especially. You know, it kind of became predictable when they started killing each other. And you kind of knew where it was going to go. At least I figured it was going to go the way it did. But we, I mean, yeah, honestly, I don't think this was a movie that was supposed to surprise you because mm -hmm. you could tell everything was telegraphed. Like, like you knew at the, at the card game he was going to get ripped off and it was going to be terrible, right? You, you, I mean, you, you just like you knew when, when the guy at the end had the Vinnie Jones's son. With the knife to his neck, you knew he was going to get a very, very nasty end, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's still it's like it's more yeah when when you got when you got a roller coaster ride you know when you go up the hill you're gonna go down it right it's just well, like, you know, yeah. but I have to say I did love the the two bumbling crooks the way they got killed and the one with the hatchet to the back. Yeah. Right, right. I did enjoy the symmetry of it, how literally everybody killed each other off for them. And it happened over and over again. Mm hmm. It, contrivance, it, it, I think, did sort of lurch into the mind there. That when, it, when it happens effectively twice. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they, they said not again. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, yeah. This is what, like, that's right. that's when you know, as prob problem being said at the very top of the show, when when things happen over and over again, that's when something becomes cartoon. That's when it becomes Roadrunner and the uh, and the Wile E. Coyote. That's when it yeah. becomes a bit like the Beano. And and I probably would have resisted that if I was them. I think it right. harms. I, I love all of those things. Everything you so did. Do I, mate. Like, so, yeah, do <laughs> so do I. So do I. Hey, it's a good film. It's a good Sorry? film. I think it's a good okay. film. Yeah, it's good. It's solid. What's your yeah. thoughts? Oh, good fight. Okay, problem being, what, what, uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I said in the chat before we came on and, and Father Miller picked up and, you know, it, it, it is it is a sort of a, 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 the, the rip-off. <laughs> it's for no other, no other way of saying it, you know, as of the Italian job ending you know you got that kind of yeah is it gonna is it gonna go over isn't it you know <laughs> like the balancing yeah, act i i i, I would have thought that ending was was put in by by the the new editor from like, well, what uh, mega geek told us about that's that that seems likely to me quite right and, but yeah you know all that stuff just works for me he was just he basically what he was doing he was trying to copy Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, and right. you can see you can see the influence. Everybody has a monologue yeah. to say, everyone. So you know what I mean. So so he was trying to do that, and he achieved it. He, he put a British uh, spin on it, I, I, and that's I, good I, enough. You know, I, I, I think the, the the final sort of act with the uh, you know everyone being rubbed out was pretty comical and, and amusing. Uh, the big bad being sort of taken out, and then they realise, you know, that he's taken out his own boss. <laughs> I, think, mm. I think that was right, quite right, funny. Right. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I just think that, it, yeah, it, it did sort of play up to the will there or won't they? Will there or won't they? Will this be a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, no, they, 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 the, the uh, sequel would definitely be match, which uh, yeah, uh, I, I remember match being the superior movie, but now I kind of just want to go and see because this was. Far better than I remembered. Like far, far more enjoyable. Fine. One thing about the Richie's, Richie's movies as well, he does leave them off very much so for sequels, particularly with Rock and Roll. I think he fully believed that that was going to get a sequel because at the end, of course, you have that tagline, "Wait for Rock and Roll too." But what's interesting, he seems to be getting a sequel with the Gentleman with a TV series. Really? So I'm yeah. off for that. Yeah. Let me get. It was it HBO Max? They they're paying pay for everything. <laughs> uh, I did report on it in a video recently. I can't quite remember who the company was right now, but I'll I, check out your also, who oh, was right. um, Dan? Is in the, Dan. In the video. Don't subscribe to everybody. Sorry, uh, who was who was the guy at the end? In famous comedian, right at the very end in the police station. Who was it? Yes, oh, that, the guy Rob, that Rob Ryden. Rob Ryden was it? No, he, Rob Ryden played. Rob Ryden played the. Uh, the Rob Ryden played the uh, the um, tickets. The uh, Traffic warden, but That's the it. Yeah. but you're talking about. I suspect you're talking about the older guy in the long black coat. With no, the no, no. Hair. It's Rob Ryden right at the ending after yeah. uh, Vinnie Jones smashes into the car, and you have the scene where uh, uh, Nick Moran. Yeah, is yeah. In the, and that's Rob Ryden. That's, that's Rob Ryden from Rob Gavin from Gavin and yeah. Stacey. Yes, and, and it's God knows him. the trip yeah, with is. Steve Coogan. Yeah, yes. wonderful, wonderful he actor. Turns into and any now, <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't stand him, but you know, Rabbi, go and have <laughs> Rabbi. You need to go and have a look at the trip. Yes, Probably good. Just, they've made three series of the show: Steve Coogan and Rob Bryden. I won't tell you anything about it. Just the trip. The I only I only really enjoyed the first season, but go and check that out. I think you may find that amusing. Rob Bryden was quite and Rob Bryden. Rob Bryden was quite a a big character actor, kind of. 
in this country about 10 years ago because Gavin and Stacey went huge. Mm. And yeah. like problem being, I got a little bit fed up with him. But when they, when he and Steve Coogan are, t- are together doing something, it's uh, some some sort of magic happens there. So he was he was pretty good in that. He was very understated, which isn't like Rob Brydon. He mm. does over egg things a little. There was another actor in this at it the end of the police station. Beaten up though, no, that was good. That was <laughs> the, well, there were several actors in this that yeah. are in, in everything. I mean, the great big mm. fat fella with the uh, the uh, the phone. You know, he's been in Birds of a Feather and you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All, all of these actors are pretty well, mainstream. I, mean, I, I, the I get the feeling that they, they, they're pulling from, you know... A, yeah. A... How do you spell Rob Bryden? I don't know. We're just typing... Right. Okay, so, so I, I, I think we can say that that is... Uh, lost we came. Of... We saw. We conquered. We came. We saw. Uh, we, we, it may, we may have conquered. It may have conquered us. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, not I'm not sure. Let's see uh, uh, the choices for next week. Let me, oh, let yeah. me pull them up. So, Behind door number one. What Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's going to be. Oh. It's okay. Door number one. Oh, isn't here. Here we go. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you know got it going on? I'm crying. Well, uh, uh, I'm uh, going for this. Great movie. <laughs> Freaking great movie. But, but I, and you, you understand people like choice. Choice is important. Thing. I knew so it behind, door yeah. Two, yeah. behind door number two. Is this? Okay. Oh, no, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> not even. No. Oh, They're both terrible. They're both terrible. Oh, okay. So, I, I, I've enjoyed Potter, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you like? What's your choice? Uh, are you serious asking me that question? You know my answer. <laughs> <laughs> what with you, baby? Yeah, I'm going with Pacific Rim, absolutely. Okay, nobody tell no tonight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I think you're going to make his day even. And- Sweeter, I swear to God. Well, he just released his video. Well, that's really Kong Skull Island. Is is it? I I enjoyed it. Um, uh, Father Miller, what would you be your choice of the two? I'll go with Pacific. Yes, it, oh, it might be the week. This might be the week. Uh, Dad, what what, uh, what would you choose? So we've got so the rabbi's gone Pacific Rim, and Father Christopher's gone Pacific Rim, and then Janite's gone gone Pacific Rim. Yeah. yeah. So that's well, three, I, I, three so far. I haven't said mine yet either. So that's three. So that's three out of the six of us. That mm-hmm. means that people can't possibly hate me for also choosing Pacific Rim, please. Yes. <laughs> okay. Chris Bergen likes Skull Island. Okay. I have a time problem. Does not like Skull Island. I love Skull Island, but I've seen it about three times already. Oh, really? <laughs> I've already seen it once. Uh, problem being, what's your point? I, I, I would love. I would love. Love. For us to do some more obscure movies. <laughs> Me too, actually. Me too. Would be nice. Uh, well, well, I killers. Mind you, tonight's was like, obscure, but you know, because it's not it's not very often mm-hmm. watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. um look, let's get out of the way, Pacific Room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll Pacific the room, I will do smaller movies. <laughs> like, I've got this one out of the way, I can just about endure another <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> It's much better than you think it is. It's really yeah, I've enjoyable. Seen it. I've, I've never seen, seen it. it. I've never seen it. I'll get oh, out of man, here. The music. Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> the heavy metal guitars. It's unbelievable. It's great. It, yeah, it, it, it is. Like fun. every cyber movie. <laughs> so uh, good. It, this movie, I think, is really, truly uh, uh, original for its uh, uh, unoriginality. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It, it, uh, it's a moot point, but what, what would what what would you pick if you had the complete choice, Mega Geek? Me? Yeah. What, between these two films? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't put, pick Pacific Rim. I'd probably, and I wouldn't pick um, Kong either. I think these two movies are awful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you know, have say, you have to choose one. Which one would it, you? It doesn't choose? matter. It doesn't matter now because everybody's gone for Pacific Rim. So it'd be Pacific Rim, <laughs> wouldn't well, it? So. If, if, you, <laughs> if, you if I had the choice, choice yes. If I had Which the is the best of evils for you? Um, I'd probably Kong, I guess. I don't oh, know. Okay. But oh, it's Pacific okay. Rim, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. can I just mention before because he's he? I know we mentioned it a few minutes ago, but I just want to say how how much I have really, really enjoyed watching watching Lockstock and talking about it with you guys. But mm-hmm. in my view, uh, Ian's film, The Killing Zone, is hey! superior. <laughs> superior. <laughs> I, I I think I prefer Bad Day to Killing Zone. To be honest with you, I yeah. like Bad Day a lot. It was it's yeah. a I, I, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm uh, not just saying this. The people watching in the chat who haven't seen The Killing Zone, I think that what they try to do in Lockstock with bringing that all together at the end, I think you do that much more successfully in your film. Well, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, it so only struck, it only, I, I, it only I, I, struck I, I, me this week. My Sorry? Problem, problem I, being? I said high praise. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you very much. Thank One you. Second. I'm going to put his, your channel in right in the chat now, so everybody can go to it. And again, tons of, like you got like you got good, good three, uh, uh, three, uh, three decent movies there, which is uh, pretty good. Ped yeah, pedigree, I think. Mm. Okay, fine. So yeah, I fine. Next week, Pacific Rim. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think. And, we cannot uh, wait to see Noel's response to this. Well, it's going to be classic. Oh, yeah. I, just, I just hope he's okay because this stuff it can take yeah, chunks out of people. Yeah, maybe he's going to take maybe he'll take the week off. I don't know. Um, okay then. <laughs> so with, with that said, with that said, so I'm, evil, Rabbi. So I, 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 I can be a little bit naughty. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I do like a little bit, uh, a little bit of naughtiness. Uh, so next week's episode, Rain, jo join us again at five thirty uh, UK time, seven thirty for me in, 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 uh, here in Israel, which means it's eight forty now. Now I guess it's, it's way past my bedtime. I got to get go 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 and make my cocoa and go to bed. Uh, so I can, <laughs> so, so I can it's only my, my youthful beauty. Uh, it's only twelve forty here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just saying it's only twelve. 40 here. Oh, well, they, so I still got the whole day ahead of me. Whole day ahead. Right, as I say, as I say, every, uh, uh, everybody's channel is in the chat, so, uh, is in the uh, video notes. The other thing in the video notes, which I am begging you to go and sign up for, <laughs> is my, uh, uh, go go right there. Help yourself. Uh, I know which one I'm taking. I'm taking all of them. I've got all over here. I'm just going to take them all. <laughs> yeah, that. Dan's in Dan's in the good position. Uh, unfortunately, they're not life size, you know. From uh, <laughs> okay. that'd be great if I could make them that big, wouldn't it? Make an eyeful. Yeah, and, you know what? I think mean, that 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 would be an awesome stretch goal. Fine, so I'm going to uh -huh. click the end broadcast button, and then I'm going to click the end broadcast button.